Hi you guys, I'm Leanne and I'll be your instructor for your lesson today. We're really excited about today's lesson and we think you're going to love it. As always, make sure that you guys are working on the map that's provided in the box when you're working on your table. Make sure that you put your name on your project legibly because there's going to be a lot of you guys coming in and bringing stuff to us. So we want to make sure that we know whose is whose. And lastly, make sure that you clean up really well after each lesson. A bucket of water and a sponge and just a quick wipe down the mat. Should be all you need. All right, we're excited. Let's get started. All right, welcome to class today. We are going to be doing a class on scraffito. Scraffito means is an Italian word that means to scratch. So you're scratching in to a surface of a pot, revealing the clay below to create imagery. Someone did their pet portrait, isn't that cute? And here's another one. All right, you guys should have in your box a clay slab in a plate mold. Please be careful with these plate molds. You'll need a sponge, a paintbrush, your cup of underglaze, a scraffito tool, and some source material that I put in the box for you. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to take the plate and you're going to gently kind of take it out of the form, set the form to the side. I'm going to have you start cleaning up these edges. You'll see that when the plates went in there, they're pretty wet, so we weren't able to clean up those edges, so I'm going to have you guys clean those up now. So just by taking the sponge and having it fairly kind of damp, you'll take here, just between my index finger and my thumb, I'm just going to press down, apply pressure, moving around, and what that does is that helps smooth those edges out and finish that edge a little bit so it's not so rough. So again, I'm just taking my index finger and my thumb here and just applying pressure on either side with the sponge and smoothing that clay out. When you get done, you can kind of brush some of those little pieces off. Make sure that you've got a nice clean surface before you place the plate back into the mold. Opening your underglaze, you'll stir it up good. You're going to start applying a coat of underglaze, a nice even coat all the way across. If it gets these little chunks in there, just keep running your brush over it and that will smooth those out. So you want a nice smooth surface as you go. Go there and the first coat isn't gonna completely cover your surface, you're gonna still be able to see some of that darker clay underneath. So this will at least take two coats. And what I mean by coats is two coverings of the underglaze onto the plate. Coming in and I'm just kinda working that all the way through. So you can see I can still see some of that underlie color of the clay, but I'm just gonna leave it. I'm gonna set it aside and let it dry and then I'll come back in about 20 minutes or so, putting a second coat onto it with the same technique, and that's gonna give me more of an opaque coverage. And sometimes you guys might even have to do a third coat. But just let it dry in between. It takes a little patience, I know. Okay, just for time, I already finished one right here. Ta-da! So we have a finished product. And so when you do enough coats onto it, you can tell the difference. We're gonna have a nice opaque coverage onto our plate. So while you guys are waiting for your plate to dry in between coats, you can also, there's a little piece of scrap paper clay in your box also. Go ahead and coat that a couple times with the underglaze while you're waiting, just so we can have a test practice piece to practice our mark making before we dive into our project. So I want you guys to go ahead and look online or look on Pinterest and look at for some ideas of scraffito. 
you're going to get some quite a few images of pots. I know I showed you guys this earlier, where it's a play on positive and negative space. When I say positive, the positive space is the image that you see. The negative space is the background. And by creating different textures and taking out different parts of your background or of your form, it's going to start to create some interest. So go ahead and take a look online on Scurfito images and also look up some Zentangles. I'm going to teach you guys some Zentangles today is what we're going to do for our demo, but you guys can kind of do whatever you want. This is your own artistic interpretation if you feel more comfortable moving on to something else. So Zentangle is a form of meditated doodling that just focuses on patterns. So it doesn't have to be exact with it, and so it gives you a little bit more freedom if this is your first time using the Scurfito technique to loosen everything up. So I put this wheel in here, and this is going to section my piece into easy pie shapes that I can put different patterns in. So in the end, it's gonna create some pretty interesting techniques. You guys are gonna take a pencil and just gently kind of move in and just pressing down all the way across the form. And I'm pressing fairly firm. You can kind of feel it move into the clay because we're wanting to make an indention so we know where our lines are going to be going. So I'm just doing all of my pie sections here. So when I take this out, I have, oops, I forgot one. I can come in here and try to kind of line it up again and come right here for our last one. So you can see it's got that just slight little indention and these are going to be our guidelines for it. Before you delve into your project, I'm going to have you take your scrap piece right here and this is called a Scurfito tool. You're going to notice that it has two separate edges on it. There's a thicker and a thinner one. A wire kind of gauge and that's going to give you an idea of these different gauges of wires give you different line qualities so this thinner one is going to give me a little bit thinner of a line this thicker one is going to give me a thicker line so kind of just practice this is kind of your mark making thing to get an idea of how much pressure that you're having to apply to the tools you go when you feel comfortable I'm gonna have you move to your plate so I'm going to start here and I'm just going to section this off and I'm just gently applying pressure and what it's doing is just taking out that top coat of underglaze, revealing the clay surface underneath for our out, outer lines of our Zentangle. Now I can just kind of blow on this. You don't really want to brush your hand across it because what's going to happen if you brush your hand across it, it's going to move those clay pieces across it and it's going to kind of scuff the surface of it. So I always just kind of want to blow on there to kind of get those extra ones out. See where I moved it? I wasn't quite perfect, so I'm just going to add a little circle in here. So it kind of almost looks like spokes of a wheel. Okay. I put a variety of patterns in each box just so you guys can kind of start out with some templates but then after that if you're choosing to do this and take I want you guys to kind of move into some free forms once you feel more comfortable with the tools but for these ones I'm going to show you just that same way you can kind of transfer that image is on here. So you guys want to cut this piece to match your pie piece. Or as kind of close as you can to it to kind of give you an idea. So I'm a little bit short on this, but I can move it here and then I can move this back over to kind of add into it. Or I can come up here and this pie piece is a little smaller, so I think I'll use that one. I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna do that same technique where I'm just tracing these lines 
all the way here. Now I left you guys just a regular number two pencil in your box, but if you have a colored pencil, sometimes that's nice to trace over because then you can tell where you've been for your lines. So I'm coming all the way in and I'm just moving down and just impressing in. When I take that off, I have my just little impressions. Now using my Scarfito tool, I'm gonna to come in. I'm gonna start taking out that top layer to reveal my design. Every once in a while, you guys can take this and blow this off. I think that it's getting just a little bit crazy for you. And I'm not going too deep. Remember that it's just scratching the surface. Graffito means to scratch. So we don't want to dig too deep into the plate. So we go all the way through the form. And I'm just gonna add this little bit down here too. And there we go, there's our first box. Our second one, now you guys can keep printing and using these forms. You can use the same form the entire time if you'd like, all the way around. You could use the different varieties from the boxes or you guys can start free uh, freehanding. Remember, Zentangle is Z uh, meditative doodling. So you guys, this is a great practice piece to decide, be like, well, I think I'm gonna do some line work and then maybe change up my diagonals and stuff like that. So you guys go ahead and practice on here some design work before you transfer it onto the plate. But here, I'm just gonna go ahead and freehand some work. You guys, this is a great thing to watch and do in front of the TV or outside since it's going to be beautiful. Get yourself some little vitamin D and sunshine, but just be mindful of these little pieces of clay as they come in. If you do decide to do it while you're watching TV, just make sure that your mat's underneath you and you're dropping your pieces of clay onto your mat and cleaning up your mess when you get done. So you guys feel free to experiment and challenge yourself on some of these designs and patterns. Now, we'll be back after a little bit and I'm gonna show you what this finished product looks like. Okay, time lapse. That's the lovely thing about video. We finished our Scarfino plate. We went for a variety of textures and also Varying your line quality is gonna create some interest in this too. So thick versus thin lines, the way that your diagonals are moving versus verticals, that's what's gonna create some interest from kind of moving through here. I'm gonna take this, so as we're talking about line quality and variety, I have a lot of the same thicknesses as we're moving around, so I wanna change that up. So to do that, I'm just gonna come here and I'm just gonna make the wheels of my spokes just thicker. That way it's gonna give it a little bit more definition in between, a really strong line in between some of these. And it's going to kind of segment and give distinction between these sections. Okay, let me finish this and we'll cut back to it in a second. Okay, so we finished this plate and see how that just kind of gave that strong definition in between them and by for just changing up my line quality, it kind of gave it just a little bit more of an interest. So again, this is your guys' own artistic interpretation. I think this is what's so fun about this project is that it's got you a lot of freedom to kind of work and work on your mark making, your pattern, and each one should be a little bit different. So I'm excited to see when we all come back together again, how these look. Remember just that you guys can always test on these scrap pieces to kind of give you an idea before moving it onto here. Cause once you move it onto this plate, it's pretty much permanent. When you finish, 
please flip your plate over and put your initials into it. Then also you can just kind of dust any little pieces off that are in there. You'll stick it back in the mold and it'll come back into the mold to the pottery, just like that. Now, this is important. Make sure that you guys roll. You're gonna have quite a bit of little pieces here. Make sure you kind of take this, take it outside and dump it and shake it outside before you wipe it down so it doesn't get all over the floor. All right, good luck with your Zantago and we're excited to see them when you finish.